Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. For today's topic, we're talking about what do you really need to run a TTRPG on a budget. And guess what? I definitely have an answer for you because I'm currently running off an emergency budget and my survivalist backpack. And if you're asking Jorben, why is that? Please go check out my last video. I go into great detail about the situation in Western North Carolina in ways that you can donate or help. I'll also put those links down in the description below if you don't want to click away from this video. So what do you really need in order to run a tabletop role-playing game on a budget? Some might simply say some dice. Others say you're going to at least need pencil and paper depending on the game that you are running. But for most of you out there, the bare minimum isn't going to be a satisfactory answer for what you need in order to run. I'm currently gearing up for a game of Shadow Dark that I want to run for my parents and my in-laws. This is going to be the first role-playing game they've ever had a chance to play, so I want it to go as smoothly as humanly possible. But like I said, I'm on a budget and I have limited supplies right now. And so for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have some basic supplies laying around your house. For me, I looked in my backpack and I have two things that we already need in order to play. Character sheets and pens. Now, depending on the game that you're planning on running, there may be a certain level of complexity to the characters that your players are playing as. But in most cases, a simple legal pad, notepad, or even 3x5 index cards are enough to get you started, along with a few pens. Turns out, in most tabletop role-playing games, characters are comprised of very few things. Hit points, armor class, maybe a few stats and modifiers, and then the rest are details filled in by your players. And if you really want to get fancy, maybe draw some little boxes on their character sheets like I've done here. Then, of course, we have dice. Now, I have this small bag of dice that I keep on my backpack at all times. But maybe you've somehow made it this far into the hobby and don't own any dice. Now, there are plenty of free dice rolling tools or apps online if you prefer not to go out of your way and buy dice for all your players, or maybe you just don't have access to them at the moment. I usually carry enough dice for about three or four players, and then I hope that at least someone in the group has their own, but this is a special occasion where this is all I have, so. So this next one is a bit of an extra thing and isn't really necessary, but I brought this along so I wanted to mention it. I take a deck of playing cards just about everywhere I go, and I'm going to use these as a system to track initiative and maybe decide random things like, like who gets hit first by traps or monsters and things like that if I just want a random effect that isn't used by dice for dramatic purposes. Sometimes having to draw a card from a deck is just another tactile way to get your players engaged at the table. So a simple deck of playing cards numbered 1 through 12 or even using some of the face value cards for different things like boss monsters is an easy way to track initiative. Or you can go to your local Walmart and it probably is going to cost you about 97 cents for one of those. Okay, moving on to more visual aids. If you're anything like me and you're running a classic sort of dungeon crawl, you may want some sort of visual aid to keep track of things like encounters or where the characters are headed within a dungeon. So for me, I have my classic roll-up Chessex map. Again, this isn't necessary for every type of game you're going to play, and honestly was one of the more pricey things in my kit. I think you can get the regular size one for about 20, 25 bucks, and then the bigger one is about 50 if you want to go all out. But there's also useful tools like Pathfinder has a lot of dry erase mats that can fold up easily and fit in your backpack, and I think those run from about 15 to 20 bucks. And if you don't want to go out of the way for one of these bad boys, just look for some old birthday or Christmas wrapping paper that's laying around, flip it over to the backside, and a lot of those have a one inch grid on them. Just cut what you need and draw on that. Works perfect in a pinch. Now, moving on to miniatures. If you are using things like a board or a visual aid, then you're probably also going to want a way to track those players and the monsters that they're fighting. Many times, you can pull the board game pieces from any old game you have laying around like Sorry or Monopoly and use those to represent the player characters. I found these colorful board game replacement pieces at a local craft store, and it was only a couple of bucks for all of these. You can also use different colored or different styled dice than the ones that your players are using as miniatures. There's also things like this. I got these extra Scrabble tile pieces from a local craft store, and it's an easy way to track monsters without losing track of what's going on in a heated battle. They were cheap, they're already marked with all the letters of the alphabet, so you're going to be able to track quite a few creatures with these before you run out and need something new. Plus they were like two bucks. Then of course, last but not least, just grab whatever system you're excited about running and an adventure that goes along with it. 
And just like the title of this video suggests, if you're on a budget, games like Mouse Ritter and Cairn are free on itch.io. You can also get games like Nave for about $3 anywhere you can find it online. And plus, while you're there, itch.io has a ton of free or pay what you want adventures that are really worth your time to check out and run. And of course, you can always just come up with your own adventures for free. Okay, so that's pretty much going to be it for me and my budget kit. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. I have plenty of other videos with advice about how to run tabletop role-playing games. And again, if you haven't seen this video right here, please go and give it a watch. It's really important to the ongoing situation in Western North Carolina and to the people in the region that I call home. And just one more thing I wanted to bring up while we're discussing this. There were a few very generous folks out there who sent me a few donations, and I just wanted to say, while I appreciate it during this time, please just donate to the causes that I've listed below in the description or in the description of that other video I just made. Because for the time being, anything that gets sent to me is just going to go straight back to one of those donations. I say this because you're essentially just going to be giving a chunk of your donation to YouTube. I'm not going to be taking any donations right now. My family and I are fine. We're staying with family members in Georgia until we can get clean running water for us and for our kid. I do appreciate those donations, but I just wanted to be completely transparent. If you're out there in the greater Asheville area and somehow you found my channel or videos, stay strong, keep your chin up. And I just want to give a genuine thanks to the community that has surrounded this channel. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you do. I appreciate you guys so much. And last but not least, I decided to create a Discord so that community members can get in touch with me easier. And I'm going to post a link to that in the description below. I may even put it up right here. So if you want to talk to me or just check in or whatever, you can do things that way. And while you're here, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me what's in your budget kit or survival kit. Let me know if there's things I didn't point out in this video or if you have ideas for innovative ways to stay on a budget and play games like D&D. Thanks for watching, and as always, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. The shadows are dark in the dungeon the shadows are dark in the forest The shadows are dark Take heart and embark For the road is darker yet ahead The journey is long and untrodden The path is all but forgotten So take heart, face your quest For your metal the test And a hero you'll be at journey's end a hero you'll be at journey's end.